All right, uh, welcome back to the Jones Zone. I'm going to try and make this a quick video to address some of the misconceptions Hebrew Israelites seem to have about the Bible. Uh, so yeah, it's not often that I do videos like this where I, uh, you know, address Hebrew Israelites or any particular group of people for that matter. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the habit of doing this from now on. So yeah. Here we go. Okay, so the first one is the penmanship of the Bible is questionable and distorted. Okay, yeah, this one isn't even really a misconception. But, uh, yeah, the original scriptures translated from the Torah have been distorted to some degree. They were first translated from Hebrew to Greek, and then from Greek to Latin Vulgate, and finally to English. Yeah, and some of the verses in other versions of the Bible have been completely omitted and I've shown this here on my channel where I compared the new King James to the new international standard version of the Bible. But look, if you're going to blame the distorting of the text on someone, blame it on the corruption of the Roman Catholic Church. Because during the Middle Age, Europeans didn't own Bibles. In those days, uh, if you wanted to know the word, you'd have to rely on the, the priests. So yeah, I might want to blame it on them. Another misconception is that the Bible wasn't written about Christians. That there were no Christians mentioned in the Bible. Uh, that's like saying that uh, there were no 12 apostles or disciples who followed Jesus. And I, I'm not even sure if that's a misconception. That just seems like willful ignorance, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, the Old Testament preceded Christianity. The authors of the Old Testament are Abraham... Moses, Prophet Isaiah, and all the other Old Prophets. The Israelites are unarguably the people of the Old Testament, the Torah. But the Christians are the focus of the New Testament. And Apostle John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the main followers of Jesus. And they are the scholars who wrote and contributed to the New Testament. So look, if you're going to deny the New Testament as Scripture then you are denying Jesus Christ, Yeshua, King of King, the Prince of Peace, Son of Man, Adonai, the Lion of Judah. You are denying him as your Lord and Savior, and you might as well be forfeiting your salvation at that point. I mean, it's not wise to do that. Remember, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter how many works you've done, how many times you've praised Yahweh, it, it just doesn't matter, okay? The way sin is dealt with is different than how it was before the time of Christ, okay? Uh, some of you Hebrew Israelites, man, y'all are getting real uppity and blasphemous with the Lord. Actually, you're not even real Hebrew Israelites, because one, you don't speak Hebrew, and two, you don't live in Israel, and neither are you of Jewish descent. The Israeli Jews would likely see you guys as Gentiles, American goy. That means you guys just strive to keep the Lord's commandments. You're commandment keepers, not Israelites. More specifically, Old Testament commandment keepers. Oh, and you don't even worship the God of Israel by his true name. His name is not Yahweh, just so you know. It's Sfa Holam Kamas is his name. See? If you can't pronounce that, then you can just say Yahovah. Okay? Yahovah. That is the true name of the God of Israel. So... If Protestant Christians aren't real Christians because they don't say Yeshua, you're not real Hebrew Israelites because you don't say Yahovah. Shvah Olam Kamas. Okay? Now, you can worship Yehovah all you want. But remember, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. But he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Amen, all right? Another argument is that Protestant Christians are really uh, Roman Catholics in disguise or something like that. 
no, sir. Catholics do absolution. Protestants do repentance. Uh, and we worship Jesus Christ. Whereas Catholics, they worship Mother Mary. It's not exactly the same thing. Uh, not only that, but if you're reading the Bible in English, you have the Protestants or the pre-Protestant Christians to thank for that. They translated the Bible from Hebrew and Latin into the English mother tongue. And many of the scholars in England, they faced persecution for doing just that. You won't talk about being real God-fearing men, okay? We aren't half the God-fearing men. The Christians... Uh, who died as martyrs just to get us the real, the original King James Version of the Bible. I mean, could you imagine being a non-Catholic Christian citizen of England during the reign of uh, Queen Mary I? And if you happen to be a person found with a Bible in your possession, she'd have you burned at the stake, which is a very, a very agonizing way to die. So yeah, the Roman Catholic Church is to be blamed for all of the corruption and the distortion of biblical texts. But uh, it was the Protestant Christians who restored the scripture to his former glory. Alright, so Christians are not your enemy. Uh, your enemy should be the corruption of the Catholic Church and the secret societies that conspire to change law. But I'm not going to get into uh, secret orders and all of that. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay? So, uh, what I will say is that uh, we are seeing uh, changes and or the omitting uh, of verses from the Bible, and it is definitely a effective form of spiritual warfare that is being waged against Christians at this time. Okay, so having said that, I'm going to uh, bid you all a blessed day.